tantalizing. Tantalizing. Tantalus was born in Greek Anatolia, which is modern day Turkey. He was a king in the time before the Trojan War, when gods and humans still interacted. In fact, his father was a god, and Tantalus was the only mortal allowed to eat with all the gods in heaven. But it seems he got full of himself and his hubris made the gods angry. In one story, the gods were mad because of something to do with the death of his son, Pelops. Go ahead, look it up, if you have a strong stomach. So Tantalus was given a terrible punishment. He had to stay in a pool of fresh water, but whenever he went down to, to get a, a drink, the water level would decrease, and he was always thirsty. There was fresh fruit above his head forever, but whenever he reached for it, the wind would blow it away, and he was forever hungry. In classic fashion for antiquity, Tantalus's fate was not shared by only him, but his daughter Niobe also angered the gods, a uh, little bit of hubris in her as well, and her children suffered for it. Considering the dark past of this word, when it was first used in the late 1700s and early 1800s, tantalizing basically meant frustrating. You know, something you wanted but could not achieve had a tantalizing appearance. But we don't say that anymore. Uh, the phrase tantalizing mystery is more interesting because when it was first used, it was paired with words such as unsatisfying, perplexing, abrupt. In one uh, story written by a colonial soldier, he talked about the Burmese inhabitants who had to use cruel and tantalizing English silverware, which was difficult for them, and so their, their eating was very slow and tantalizing. <laughs> but from the late 1800s, a tantalizing mystery came to mean fun or intriguing. In 1864, the famous American author Nathaniel Hawthorne described a wooden sculpture being crafted by a very quiet artist. And the townspeople would come and remark about its beauty, its grace, and even its divinity. Yes, everyone in town was fixed upon the tantalizing mystery of this new project. It was a good thing to be tantalized. And today, unlike our poor Greek king, a tantalizing glimpse of some dessert can make us excited. And uh, when we ask the question, was King Arthur a real person? It's a tantalizing question, but we'll never know the answer for certain. It's still fun to ask. So, these days, when you hear someone call a situation tantalizing, they probably mean that it's hard to achieve, but our imagination can be satisfied even without knowing the real thing.